In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and invisible God, who dispersed the darkness of this world by the coming of your light, look, we pray, with serene countenance upon us, that we may claim with fitting praise the greatness of the nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping His commandments. Anyone who says, I know Him, and does not keep His commandments, is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. We can be sure that we are in God only when the one who claims to be living in him is living the same kind of life as Christ lived. My dear people, this is not a new commandment that I am writing to tell you but an old commandment that you were given from the beginning. The original commandment, which was the message brought to you. Yet in another way, what I am writing to you, and what is being carried out in your lives as it was in his, is a new commandment, because the night is over, and the real light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the dark. But anyone who loves his brother is living in the light and need not be afraid of stumbling, unlike the man who hates his brother and is in the darkness, not knowing where he is going because it is too dark to see. The Word of the Lord Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. O sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. O sing to the Lord. Bless His name. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Proclaim His help day by day. Tell among the nations His glory and His wonders among all the peoples. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. It was the Lord who made the heavens. His are majesty and state and power and splendor in His holy place. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. To all who received Him, He gave power to become children of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the day came for them to be purified, as laid down by the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, observing what stands written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord, and also to offer in sacrifice in accordance with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem, there was a man named Simeon. He was an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel's comforting and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took him into his arms and blessed God, and he said, Now, Master, 
you can let your servant go in peace, just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all the nations to see, a light to enlighten the pagans and the glory of your people Israel. As the child's father and mother stood there wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, You see this child, he is destined for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At last, O powerful Master, you give leave to your servant to go in peace according to your promise. This prayer of Simeon is part of complying, the church's night prayer of which the friars and many other religious members are very familiar with. And we heard this prayer of Simeon in today's gospel. I often fail to grasp the full meaning behind this canticle of Simeon, but today it dawned on me that Simeon was ready to die or to leave this world for the next after having held baby Jesus in his arms and having gazed at him. I sometimes wonder if this is what people call a happy death. Perhaps let us ask ourselves, am I ready and prepared to leave this world for the next any time when the Lord calls me? I know I am not there yet, and I bet majority of us are not prepared for the hour of our death or our beloved ones. Most of the time we face death with fear, anxiety, and avoidance. But if we take the example of Simeon and Anna, we will also look forward to that day beyond this earthly day when we too will see him face to face. Until then, we are invited to hold baby Jesus in our arms and gaze at him. We gaze at him in the breaking of bread in the Eucharist. We hear his voice when the Gospels are read. And if we are alert, we see him in each other and in daily encounters. And when we establish a deeper connection with Christ, our fidelity and love of God and others will surely increase and death will have no sting. And when the time comes, may we have the confidence to say to the Lord, let your servant go in peace because my eyes have seen the salvation. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us all and our loved ones in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless you and have a good day.